Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. In this video, we are gonna be talking about the top five old money fragrances. And what I mean by uh, old money fragrances is kind of like old money itself, most people try and stay discreet about it. And um, the fragrances that I list are kind of based on the fact that they're not too shouty, they're not too outgoing, they're not too loud, they're not stuff like, you know, uh, Jean-Paul Gaultier Ultra Male and stuff like that. Um, they're not like party going fragrances. All the ones we talk about are timeless, they're classy. The scent profile of them are just clean, sophisticated, kind of upscale. They've got a very kind of posh smell to them. Um, so just before we get along with the list, if you guys are new to the channel and you are a fan of fragrances, please feel free to go down and drop a like on this video and subscribe. Uh, we are building a community. We've just recently hit 1,000 subscribers. I am going to be doing a special video for that one. It's going to be very long. I'm going to be ranking all of my fragrances from uh, worst to best. So that's going to be a long one. Okay, so we are going to kick things off in uh, the honorable mention spot. We've got one of two. So the first one we're going to be talking about is a little bit different to the other ones on the list. And the reason why uh, and this is the reason why it's in the honorable mention, to be honest, uh, is because it's so different to the other ones um, that it kind of has its own separate thing. And you could replace it with another uh, popular fragrance. I just happen to have this kind of version, uh, this kind of version of the DNA. And the one that we are going to be talking about is something you can wear in the winter time. And it's something I would think someone sits by like a fireplace and they're kind of in their estate in the winter time. Uh, and the one we are talking about is this one. Lovely bottle too. I love the bottle design, Amouage Boundless. So Amouage Boundless, this is considered to be a warm, spicy amber fragrance. And this one gets compared to a lot to Tom Ford's Tobacco Vanille. I'm just gonna smell this one quickly. <sighs> yeah, it is nice. It's so kind of refined. It's not too out there. Yeah, you just get the kind of amouage-ness to it with like this sort of dry spices, but then you also get this really nice uplifting smell of like this warm tobacco and this really warm kind of sweet vanilla uh, in the base of this one that just really smooth it all out. It keeps it really refined. And I can just picture a kind of older person wearing this um, with a fireplace and they're reading their book um, and you know, they're smoking a pipe or something like that with the tobacco. That is what I get from this one. This one's kind of more like mature, old money sort of thing. So if that sounds like something you might be interested in, definitely give this one a go or um, give Tom Ford Tobacco Vanille a go as well. They're really good, really classy. They're not too shouty, but the performance is really good, especially on the Amouage. So the next one on our honorable mentions, this one is the complete opposite to Boundless. This one, even though it has got a bit of like incense and stuff to it, this one's more youthful. This one's a lot more kind of um, almost playful, whereas this one's kind of much more serious. Uh, this one is more for the summertime. So this one would be fall and winter mature, whereas this one, the other honorable mention, Versace Dylan Blue, there we go. Versace Dylan Blue, this one's more for like the youthful audience uh, in the summertime uh, when you're on holiday. That's how I can picture someone wearing this. I'm just gonna throw a photo up of what I can imagine someone who wears this would be. This would be like the kind of nighttime, uh, kind of party goer um, kind of fragrance. It's really good. It has got a nice modernness to it. It's very soapy, um, almost like deodorant shower gel smell, but the pepper and the patchouli in this kind of really give it this kind of earthiness and it just makes it sort of nice and mature in a way. Um, something kind of not too shouty that uh, old money aesthetic isn't. So yeah, next one on our honorable mention is Versace Dylan Blue, super versatile too. Okay, so we're gonna kick things off with the number five spot. This one to me is similar to Dylan Blue, but you can wear it more in the daytime. I can see someone on a yacht uh, in Greece uh, would wear this one. Even like the bottle sort of looks like um, the white houses with the blue domes on them. Uh, there's probably a name for it, but... Um, Next one on our list, coming in at the number five spot. This one is so classy to me. I really do like this one. I think the DNA has been out for quite a long time. And that's this one here. Dolce & Gabbana Light Blue 
Owen Tents. And there are so many flankers to this one. You could probably choose any of them. Uh, like Sun, you've got the one with like the white um, uh, ceramic sort of look to it. There's so many other ones. <sighs> but man, this to me smells like one of my shaving cream that I have. And it's just something really classy, really sort of almost um, old school to this in a new fashion way. <laughs> and the notes in this one, this has got a kind of marineness to it. So it really suits that kind of by the beach, by the sea sort of feel. And there's not too many notes actually going on in this one. This just smells like you're kind of like at a bar or something in Greece, in the south of France, in the Amalfi Coast. Um, super nice, super classy. This is a really good performer, especially when uh, the heat comes onto it. There's a grapefruit note in this that it really, really sticks out. Uh, I wore this to London and uh, the sun was like beaming down on it and I could smell it all day. And where I was in London, I think I was in South Kensington or, or Paddington area, which is quite kind of um, old money sort of thing. And I don't know, it just seemed to fit it really well. And ever since then, I've considered this one to be a kind of old money aesthetic and it's a really good one. So come at number five spot, Dolce & Gabbana, light blue, oh intense. Okay guys, coming in at the number four spot. This one, um, I normally wear this whenever I wear like a light colored suit and it fits it perfectly. A, a tan suit is one that I can really see this one working well with. Uh, it's got a really nice lemon note to it. Probably the best lemon note, I think, in any designer that I know. Um, I'm just gonna pull up the notes on this one. Um, yeah, again, just like some of the other fragrances, uh, like this one, there's not actually too much notes that go on to it. It's quite simple, which is what the old money aesthetic is. This one that we're going to be talking about is considered to be a lemon meringue pie. And that is this one here. Chanel Allure Home Sport O Extreme. And I'm just going to smell this one quick because I haven't smelled it in ages. Oh, man. <clears throat> it just reminds me of uh, summertime. Uh, when I went to a wedding and I was wearing the suit and this fragrance, it just pulls it off perfectly. If you've got like a, uh, a wedding or something like that and you're wearing a suit, if you're wearing something kind of minimalistic upscale, this is what you want to get. This would be perfect with like the neutral kind of tan colors that uh, the old money aesthetics kind of all about. This one's got an almost gourmand, but in a way that is like fresh as well from the lemon in here. It's, like I said, my favorite lemon note in any designer. And it's Chanel as well, which is kind of one of the more higher end, uh, the more kind of well-known high end designers. And this one's no different. It doesn't get talked about enough compared to uh, Bleu de Chanel and the normal ex oh, extreme version of this. But if you see this one, give it a go because it is so nice. It's so classy. I really like it. I might wear it for my scent of the day, I, I don't know. Um, but coming in at the number four spot, you've got Chanel uh, Edition Blanche. Okay, next up, we are really stepping up a gear with um, these two. Um, we're gonna include two in the same spot. And the reason why is I just could not decide. Both of these are so, so posh. Um, they really do remind me of like old money, kind of um, almost billionaire sort of smell. The first one we're going to be talking about is this one, and that is from Amouage. It's called Jubilation 25. So Jubilation 25, I've probably talked about enough on the channel. This has got so, so many notes listed in it, but it does it in such a nice, refined way. So this, to me, is a honey and blackberry smell. So you've got a really nice, juicy blackberry in the top note with this honey and spices that are just thrown into it. And then in the middle, you've got really nice kind of flowery notes that kind of give this a nice lightness. Um, it's very mature in a way that makes it smell almost like something your dad, almost granddad would wear, but in a really weird, timeless way. It sounds like something you might not like. But when you get your nose on this, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. It's so posh. Apparently, this is Vladimir Putin's fragrance, uh, or is uh, one of his favorite fragrances, and I can understand why. 
Uh, well, it's anyone's favorite fragrance. It's my favorite fragrance. Um, and it's just so posh. It's so, so posh. When I think of Old Money, this thing comes to mind every single time. Uh, the other one we're gonna be talking about, um, it doesn't smell as nice to me, but I have to include it because it is probably the most, uh, or if not one of the most posh fragrances, again from Amouage, is this one here. It's not talked about enough, and that's Dear Man. So Dear Man, this is probably one of the most light Amouage fragrances. So Amouage are known for being really powerful, um, this one, Jubilation 25, isn't the most powerful one, I'll admit, uh, but Dear Man, this one is probably the least shouty Amouage that they do. And Dear Man is a really nice, almost dry smell to it. It's got the main note of Peony, and Peony is hardly ever used in men's fragrances. <sighs> it's so classy, though. Um, I can see someone wearing this to, like... Um, a kind of like upscale event, like uh, going to uh, like a dinner or going to like a theater or something. It's definitely a more kind of posh upscale sort of thing. Um, I wouldn't wear this casually really, um, but old money, if you are going to an event and you want to really kind of smell upscale and you're going around talking to a lot of people and they're really close in your kind of scent bubble, this is a perfect choice because it lasts forever, but it doesn't go anywhere kind of past here really. Um, which I think is good because it kind of, it's not shouty, it's not too much, uh, but it's so posh. Oh, man. Dear man, it's got a really nice dry vet of a note and also it's got a really nice plum note in there too. So it gives it an almost juiciness, but it stays quite dry. Nothing smells like this. It's so under the radar from Amouage. Um, it's so in the background, but I love it so much. So coming in, uh, joint third, you've got Dear Man and you've got Jubilation Man. Two amazing old money fragrances from Amouage. And just thinking about it, you could also put in Reflection Man and you could definitely put in Beloved Man uh, in that list as well from Amouage. Uh, okay, so coming in at the number two spot. This one, uh, we're going back to designers. This one to me, this to me is the perfect polo and also button up shirt uh, fragrance that you can buy. Um, it's so classy, it's so clean soapy, and that's from Prada. They're known for their soapy fragrances. It's got such a nice note of uh, iris in here, and I've worn this quite a lot, especially recently. <sighs> it's a very powdery, almost fl white floral flowery smell. It's so posh too. Um, it's so neutral, so I think you could wear this with anything. You could wear it any time of year. Um, if I smell this on like, you know, uh, some trust fund guy and I knew he was wearing this, I'd be like, yeah, fair enough, good choice. Uh, it's so good. Old money, this is perfect. Um, it's so, so good. So versatile. I absolutely love it. You could wear this as a signature scent. You could wear it anywhere, I feel, um, especially kind of that old money aesthetic. If you want to stay neutral and you don't want to be too shouty, don't want to be like, you know, too playful, this is perfect. It's just perfectly balanced. So coming at the number two spot, you've got Prada Lom. And guys, coming in at the number one spot, this has to be here. Um, the fragrance house has to be in the number one spot because, um, well, they say they've been around for um, a very long time, but it's known that uh, a lot of celebrities wear this, a lot of kind of like old money people uh, wear this one, it's worn by so many rich people uh, as their signature scent. It's been around for a very long time as well, so that's got to mean something too. And even the scent profile, and when you wear this one, you really do feel like, um, to me I feel like I probably shouldn't be wearing it because it feels kind of too uh, classy, kind of too um, high-end for my liking. Um, but nonetheless, it's so good. I get so many compliments on this one as well too. Uh, and that is this one here from the House of Creed, and that is this one, Green Irish Tweed. So this is so timeless, it's so classy. I think I've said this before in a video, but this to me smells like you live in an estate um, and you've just got miles and miles and miles of fields which kind of eventually slope down uh, towards the sea and you get an almost sea breeze, but you get a really nice freshly cut grass 
Um, and the person I can see wearing this, uh, and actually kind of similar to what the name says, someone in like a tweed suit, um, kind of going on like a shooting range or something. Uh, and it just suits it perfectly. People like George Clooney, um, I think David Beckham has this. There's so many rich celebrities that wear this one and have come out and said this is their signature scent. Um, I th actually saying that, um, King Charles, this is his signature scent. Uh, I just realized that as I'm filming this. Um, King Charles, you know, the um, Windsor family, um, British royalty, I think that's probably the most old money that you can get, to be honest, um, or one of, let's say. Um, there, that, that really says it. Um, Green Irish Tweed, and also that House of Creed, you know, if you believe what they say about the stories where they used to um, create fragrances for like George the First or something like that, uh, I think they say. Um, if it is true, I, I'm not saying it is or isn't, uh, but if it is true, the House of Creed has to be associated with old money, I feel. Um, and this one is probably the best one that they have. Um, if not, I'd probably say a Rolfer, but got to give it to this one. So classy, so timeless. <sighs> the DNA has been copied uh, countless times and there's a reason for it because it smells so clean, so fresh and so green too. So coming in at the number one spot, you've got Creed Green Irish Tweed. And super cool bottle design too. Not shouty at all. It's very stealthy. It's very in the background. Uh, okay, so that is going to do it for this list, guys. Just a quick recap. Um, you've got Boundless if you want to be the kind of mature uh, winter, um, older mature version. You've got Dylan Blue if you want to be the almost kind of party boy um, in uh, vacation in the summertime. You've got Dolce & Gabbana Light Blue if you live in a hot country and... Um, it's the summertime there, and you want something for the high heat. This is very good. It's very um, kind of subtle in a way. There's not too many notes for it. Chanel Allure Home Sport. This one, I feel you could wear it any time. Uh, the lemon note in here really gives it this uh, freshness, whilst you've got the kind of meringue pie in here, which gives it an almost gourmand. So it's super, super versatile for fall, winter, uh, spring and summer too. Um, you've got Jubilation and Diamond from the House of Amouage. Um, I don't know what to say about these two. This one's super posh, and this one's kind of billionaire uh, status. So good. Um, like I said, you could add Beloved or Reflection in there too. Number two was Prada Lom, the soapy, um, powdery iris. Amazing. And number one spot, like we've just talked about, is Green Irish Tweed from the House of Creed. So guys, that is gonna do it for this video. If you enjoyed it and you made it to this far, uh, let me know down in the comments below. Please feel free to drop a like on this video and subscribe if you are a fan of fragrances uh, and you enjoy talking about them as much as I do. Um, with that said, guys, I'll see you all in the next video. Goodbye.